If I'm dreaming, please don't wake me up. <laughs> Thank you to Allie, Dave, Caroline, and, and Yvonne, and Phil for the wonderful speeches previously. It's, it's going to be a tough act to follow. Today we are here to celebrate the greatness of the New Zealand College of Chiropractic and its rich history, anchored in a strong philosophical foundation, and as a result, an outstanding reputation as the best chiropractic school for principal chiropractic in the world, with a very bright future full of inspiration and unlimited potential. It's with great pleasure that I tonight celebrate with this occasion with the New Zealand College of Chiropractic staff, faculty, students, alumni, board of trustees, delegates from higher education institutions and organizations, public officials, supporters, friends, and university stakeholders. On behalf of the New Zealand College of Chiropractic community, I want to thank all of those who come together and supported us with their attendance, warm words of welcome, pledges of support, and most of all, recognition of the college's contributions to excellence in chiropractic education with the emphasis of detection and correction of vertebral subluxations. I am humbled and very honored to be given this opportunity to lead this great institution. On the surface, the investiture is about installing a new president, but in reality, it's about all of us coming together and celebrate the great and undeniable spirit of this college. To bring worldwide attention to this great chiropractic institution, and today we celebrate our past, take pride in our current accomplishments, and look forward to the future with great anticipation. We'd like to ask your permission to briefly acknowledge some of the many wonderful people who have helped and supported me along the way. Kind of like when you have, win an Academy Award, the people pull out the little speech that's 10 pages long because they never know if they're gonna get the chance again. Furthermore, I'd like to take, uh, to intimately share with you some of the great lessons learned along the way and how it will shape my tenure as president. For you that don't know, I grew up a son of a green farmer in Illinois, about an hour and a half straight south of Davenport, Iowa. I, along with my brothers, am the seventh generation of farmers in that area. It is unheard of in my family to move out of the area, let alone to Texas and then to New Zealand. But I'm thankful for the love and unconditional support that my family has given me to pursue my dreams. I'm grateful for the lifelong lessons learned from working on the farm with my parents, Richard and Jane, who nurtured my understanding that a person should be true to their word and appreciate the value of hard work. To my grandparents, Glenn and Eileen, who, who along with my parents would travel to every sporting event that I ever participated in, no matter how far away it was. I'll never forget how proud my granddad was to look at me when I achieved success. He was a proud man, and I hope that I always will make him proud. I strongly believe that when the student is ready, a teacher will appear. That is the case with the three biggest mentors that I've had in my chiropractic career thus far. The first is Dr. Rob Sinnott. Dr. Sinnott introduced me to the philosophy of chiropractic. I had a great chiropractic education at Palmer, but Rob enhanced it by sharing with me the rich philosophy that is the foundation of our great profession. Rob is also the person who introduced me to the Green Books and would facilitate my understanding of their lessons. From Rob, I learned these lessons. First, support issues and not people. To that, sometimes people will change, but the truth does not nor does the principles that are central to chiropractic. I also learned that it's our time together that chiropractic is what chiropractic is without prefix, suffix, or compromise. I will do my best to honor that. The next teacher to enter my life was Dr. Fred Barge. I had the privilege to serve on the ISA Board of Directors with Dr. Barge and also work with him on the formation and implementation of the Diplomat in Chiropractic Philosophy. Dr. Barge showed me how to write, speak, practice, and be involved in the profession all at the same time. <coughs> and of course, Dr. Barge did it with flair. But the core of Dr. Barge's existence was focused on service to the profession. I can sum up his service best by one of his quotes. A great, prof a great profession can only be sustained through the authentic transmission of its principles from generation to generation. My next mentor is my dear friend, Dr. Gilles Lamarche. I started learning from Jill when I was in practice in Texas and he was still practicing in Canada. Jill, without a shadow of a doubt, is the person that possesses many of the characteristics that I find admirable. Most importantly, Dr. Marsh taught me to a valuable lesson of the most important thing is not what you do, but who you are doing it. 
In short, it is about the process and not about the outcome. It's very tempting to focus on goals and outcomes, goals for practice, your career, and your life. Oftentimes, people are seduced by goals and will do anything they can to achieve them, including living incongruent to their beliefs and their values. However, I'm convinced and I'm convicted to the fact that doing the things the right way with passion will take care of your goals. So many other teachers, mentors, and friends have taught me so much. Teachers like Dr. Thomas Dunstan from Western Illinois University, Dr. Rick Burns, and Dr. Maxine McMullen from my time at Palmer. Thank you for seeing more in me than I could see at the current time. I am forever grateful for the opportunities and lessons learned along the way, whether it be getting my first teaching opportunity at John Wood Community College, sharing the joys of chiropractic with the wonderful CAs and practice members at my chiropractic practice, or the hard lessons learned from being involved in the politics of chiropractic, both from allies and from foes alike. I simply want to say thank you. My life is richer and more rewarding from the relationships that I've shared with you. To my children, Erica and Blake, I cannot begin to put into words how much I appreciate your love and support that you have given me. To my daughter, Erica, and my son, Blake, I am so proud to be your dad. If there is one thing that I want you to remember, that happiness comes from you and not to you. Find your love in life and pursue it full out. You're my greatest, my greatest title in the world is dad, and I love you so much. To my loving wife, Yvonne. I don't want to make eye contact, I might cry. <laughs> Get this pretty new gown all dirty. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> if I make it through this portion of my speech without crying, it'll be a miracle. We started dating right, right before, six months before I started Palmer. And Yvonne went to the University of Missouri, which was five hours away, to pursue her PhD in sociology. At the time that we met, the only thing I had to my name was dreams. Someone once asked me how we made it work, having a long distance relationship in school, me moving to Texas without knowing a soul to support her in her teaching career, and now having a bi-hemisphere marriage. <laughs> to me, it's simple. Without a shadow of a doubt, I will never, fi never find anyone that loves and supports me and encourages me as much as you do, Yvonne. Besides being my best friend, I have learned so much about academics, chiropractics, and critical thinking from you. I'm sorry, I think I just did say chiropractics. <laughs> sorry, my apology, chiropractic. You are the love of my life. I love you more than chiropractic itself, and that's saying a lot. I simply want to say thank you. None of this would be possible without you. <laughs> to the faculty of the New Zealand College of Chiropractic. Having taught in chiropractic education, I understand intimately the calling to teach and how to make a difference in this generation of chiropractic students and the people they will serve. When I taught, I always carried with me the goal of being the teacher I wish I had in chiropractic college. Now I promise to you that I'll work hard to carry that support in you to, for you to develop that goal as well. Providing an environment for you to grow and develop to be the best educator in the world is my goal for you. I consider it an honor to work with the most talented, passionate, and caring faculty in chiropractic education. And let me say the words that an educator rarely hears enough. Thank you. To the staff of the New Zealand College of Chiropractic. You're the most valuable asset of this institution and we could not function without you. You show up every day, work tirelessly to make this college a better place for our students. You inspire me with your dedication and passion. I will nurture and support your passion and the desire to have an inspired workplace. Thank you for all you do. I appreciate you so much. To the students. I've had the opportunity to observe several chiropractic colleges and I can say to you without any reservation that you are the best students in chiropractic. There's no other student body that has the same passion, infectious spirit, dedication, and level of fun as you guys do. The college will always work hard to provide you with the best education possible. My challenge to you is to be engaged and get as much out of your experience here. In short, I challenge you to work hard and to play hard. 
We are fully committed to nurture your growth and development of future chiropractors. I absolutely love you guys heaps. <laughs> to the roundtable members that I have an opportunity to serve with, David Russell, Marina Fox, Kelly Holt, Hadi Havik, and the recently departed but not forgotten Val Panaccio and Anatole Bogatsky. Thank you for your support, guidance, collegiality, passion, and most importantly, your insight to make the New Zealand College of Chiropractic the best it can be. All of you share an unconditional love for the college, the profession, and our student body. My goal is to always to leave things better than I found it, and you have all done that in your own way so brilliantly. It takes a team to make an institution great, and you are truly a great team. I appreciate you so much. To the members of the Board of Trustees, and especially the Chairman, Dr. Phil McMaster, words cannot begin to, to express how grateful I am and appreciative I am for the opportunity that you have given me. The past six months, I have found the Board of Trustees to be an invaluable resource of the most caring individuals that I've ever worked with. After a strategic planning session last month, the Board of Trustees identified two goals for the New Zealand College of Chiropractic. One is to provide an inspired environment for our students, faculty, and staff. And the second is to graduate market-ready chiropractic commandos who are ready to lead the principle of chiropractic evolution. That comes from great training and possessing certainty that is firmly grounded in chiropractic philosophy. I have indeed found my chiropractic home, and I appreciate you so much. I look forward to working with you to make the New Zealand College of Chiropractic even better. Thank you. Finally, I want to acknowledge and thank the work of my predecessors, Jim Stenier, Robin Taylor, Ralph Boone, and Brian Kelly. I also want to thank the interim presidents who have stepped up and served the college in a time of need, Dr. Phil McMaster and Dr. Graham Dobson. Thank you. I appreciate the work you have done to make this college great and to leave, the, leave a great institution for me to find and to build upon. So where do we go from here? Now that I had the opportunity to hear all about me, let me make one thing very clear. It's not about me. It's about the principal of chiropractic and the future of our profession. So let me share with you five areas of focus during my tenure. First is to emphasize and facilitate an understanding of the philosophy of chiropractic. I'm happy to announce that the Chiropractic Philosophy Diplomat Program will start here in New Zealand in January of 2012. This 300-hour postgraduate program will focus on deepening an understanding of our philosophy, improve critical thinking skills. It will also explore the depth of relationships between the philosophy of chiropractic and the scientific paradigms that are used by our profession. In addition to how, we, to how philosophy of chiropractic is taught in our curriculum, we will explore how it integrates to all levels of chiropractic education. The end result will be high levels of certainty, communication skills, and passions in our graduate. Second, I'd like to continue to develop, support, foster, facilitate, and emphasize the world-renowned vitalistic research being done at the college. I absolutely and strongly support chiropractic research, and we are fortunate to have some great people here at the New Zealand College of Chiropractic. Being able to understand the science of our profession will help our graduates and alumni have critical thinking skills to communicate with those within and outside our profession and help add to the growing evidence of improved quality of life through chiropractic care. The third area of focus is that we will push the leading edge of understanding in the art of chiropractic. This is where all the knowledge gained gets applied to humanity through a correction that enables innate intelligence to express itself fully. The way forward will have an emphasis and dedication to our core technique and focus on the analysis of chiropractic, knowing when, where, when not to and how to adjust a patient is the most important skill of all. I'm happy to announce that in addition to providing more technique seminars at the college, plans are underway to form an upper cervical symposium next year under the guidance of Graham Dobson. The fourth focus is the business of chiropractic. Studies have shown that chiropractic graduates desire more training and the skills necessary to be successful business people. One of the ways we have addressed this issue immediately is to give all of our year four students a scholarship to chiropractic finishing school through the generosity of the Chiropractic Leadership Alliance. Furthermore, we'll bring more business success seminars to New Zealand, such as Brad Gowacki in his corporate healthcare class this November. The last area of focus will be the environment in which the college functions. To bring about a le level of spizzerinkdom, 
for chiropractic enthusiasm to our campus. This will include spiz nights to bring in top speakers, successful alumni, successful business people who champion the human spirit to make a difference in the world and to serve as a source of inspiration for the students of the college and practicing chiropractors in this region of the world. Indeed, in, indeed the New Zealand College of Chiropractic is focused on a world of people expressing optimal potential. We will always focus on that goal while having our actions directed through our core values of gratitude, integrity, vision, excellence, and of course, love. Make no mistake, any action not in line with these values will not be welcomed to the college, nor will be tolerated. Once the why of the college is clear and the how we do things is evident, then and only then will we truly fulfill our mission of providing an inspired educational program that graduates chiropractic leaders committed to the high standards of professional excellence in the philosophy, science, and art of chiropractic. We must stay innovative in our modern day applications of our timeless principles. We must be focused on a process of education, the exploration of new ideas, and inclusive communication. As president, I pledge to you to be open, honest, and transparent. At the New Zealand College of Chiropractic, we are about creating a better student, a better chiropractor, a better profession, and a better world of people expressing optimal potential. I invite you to join us in that mission. Let me close with a quote from the great Dr. Reggie Gold. If not you, then who? If not now, then when? Thank you, and I love and appreciate you all. Mm -hmm.